We're looking for the best climbing wall company out there. We've identified you as that company and, and we want to talk to you about a, a large project in West Virginia. So when we were first engaged uh, and approached by the scouts to be involved as a consultant, they pointed to two key things. They pointed to our operational expertise and they pointed to our shot rock product. El Dorado has the only product in the world that can mimic just about any outdoor rock style there is. They'd seen a few of our installations across the country and through North America and knew this is the product they need to ensure that the rocks that were built here mimicked what they had in the New River Gorge. The entire site is being developed for the National Scout Jamboree. It happens once every four years. We have worked with the scouts over the course of uh, several years to develop all the curriculum that needs to happen on, on the site. In terms of the rock climbing itself, we have the capability to host over 80,000 scouts. So we use the shot rock system it's a concrete based system that's reinforced and it allows us to fully hand sculpt just about any rock style in the world. The Jamboree is, is an opportunity to bring a lot of scout groups throughout the nation into one place, get them all in the same, in the same environment and help instill the things that the Boy Scouts are trying to, to instill in, in their troops. What became clear early on was that this was a very architectural uh, driven project. Uh, they had procured this property that was staggeringly beautiful, uh, adjacent to probably one of the most uh, well-known recreational areas in the United States. They had this, this fairly expansive vision of, of what this might be, uh, but I think they targeted uh, the climbing walls as, as perhaps the architectural entry point to the facility. I think the initial intention, all of our initial dialogue with the Boy Scouts was was simply to assist them to really develop the scope uh, and figure out the operational plan on how, how to really run this thing. I think that the Boy Scouts were very, obviously very impressed with, with what we did out there and what we provided for them. And throughout the, the scope of, of the project, uh, they were able to kind of see some of our past work. And, uh, and I think that that, that cemented it. So when it, when it actually, they made the decision to, to pick the climbing wall contractor, I'm fairly certain they didn't didn't look at anyone else. It was just uh, it was just the trust bond had been built by then. Choosing a suitable area to put the climbing walls was fairly challenging. There's been uh, many site visits. It's been uh, very much a, a personal relationship kind of thing with many many meetings on site, uh, trips out to West Virginia, uh, boots on the ground in the snow in the snow. Uh, tromping around. I think that we're the best for a couple of reasons. One is large-scale rock realistic. There's really no other company out there that, that builds on, on this scale. In order to really pull off something that really does look uh, realistic, in this case, you're in New River Gorge and you're, we're building some crags built into the hillside that if you did something that, that was just slightly off kilter, it would be pretty obvious to the, to the human eye. They picked us because of our, our product and our background in, on building large-scale projects. So I think a lot of emphasis went into the rock climbing pieces here from a couple different thoughts. The climbing has always been part of the Boy Scouts uh, curriculum. What they wanted to do with the, with the rock climbing as well as the entire site is make a statement that they're not the Boy Scouts of old, they're the Boy Scouts of new. Looking at everything that they wanted to accomplish, they chose El Dorado to create the world's largest, most creative, and most awe-inspiring rock climbing walls in the entire world. El Dorado was selected for this project after a, a search for a, uh, a climbing wall builder who, who really had the horsepower to really come up to a project of this size and to be able to mobilize quickly and respond on a short time window um, and also have, have one of the best products there is in the country. Uh, there's no one else that could do it and they've been able to bring out the resources and uh, continually time and time again fight through what I call this, this some pretty inclement weather to produce a product that's going to be very spectacular. The thing that stands out most in my mind about this project is, is truly the scope of it. We knew how many scouts needed to come through 
and what size groups, having written all the operational and programming aspects for the rocks and Boulder Cove, and having that implemented into the design, and then to see it actually built and come to fruition has been absolutely amazing. So consistency and an operational mentality has really been a huge step for, for the Boy Scouts on this project. Our scope of work consisted of two different areas. The rocks, which is uh, kind of scout specific. Um, that's, that's where they, they learn how to, to, to climb and they go through that whole process. The other location is Boulder Cove, and that's really designated for the scouts alike, but also their families and anyone that might want to visit the reserves. The largest driving factor of our design was the fact that we had to move 30,000 to 40,000 scouts through these walls and create a lasting experience for, for each and every one of them. A 30,000 square foot climbing gym might, make, might take two, three months to design. These walls are small climbing gyms put together. And so that's how we had, we had to kind of take bites, small bites out of the process. And it soon all came together as one big piece. And I think it really worked that way because each, each feature, each wall has something different to offer. We, we decided to include bouldering gardens in our designs and both areas have, have boulders there. Um, these areas have larger fall zones. It, is, it seems as, as, as though it's a larger fall zone, but really it's just to allow larger groups to get in. Because what it's about is you don't need to have a harness, you don't need to have a rope, you just have to have climbing shoes. And you get to hop on these features and you get to stand there with your buddy and really encourage them to, to take the next step. And Without that social space included in the design, um, I don't think that we would really achieve the goals that we're trying to achieve there. One of the things that's, that's really unique about the repelling towers is the use of the True Blue technology for our belay devices and for the leap of faith. But True Blue has also worked with our zip lines to provide the zip stop. So their technology site-wide is providing a safer experience for the participants that come to the summit. One of the things that I'm most excited to try is definitely the leap of faith element. This is something that Eldorado created specifically for the Bechtel Family National Scout Reserve, the Rocks area. It's a thrill ride that launches off a 32-foot tall platform mounted to one of our auto belays. Uh, truly a leap of faith and a thrilling ride. So I'm, I'm really, really excited to, to really give that a go. One of the nice things about working with Eldorado, we put a challenge in front of them to work at several different locations on site. Uh, many contractors don't have the wherewithal or the ability to do that, but they were able to juggle a lot of different uh, locations together to, to bring more than one climbing facility together. Uh, complications and hurdles on a project this size are, are really a, a, a daily event, and it's how many are they and what are they and how do you make sure that you're really staying true to the curriculum and elective nature of what we were designing for the Boy Scouts. Probably the biggest challenge thus far is the weather. As uh, we're shooting a concrete-based material, we're wholly weather dependent. We have to have certain ambient temperatures, uh, and we have to have our highly skilled artists and craftsmen up on lifts in some crazy weather conditions at this point. We've gone through uh, tenting and heating and concrete blankets. We've really thrown out everything we possibly could to get to the point that we are right now. One of the key things that I'm most impressed with and, and from Jason's eye uh, was really Tower 7 all the way at the end, knowing that that was going to be the entrance of where the scouts were coming in. And what he wanted to do is just have the entire train of scouts just stop and drop their jaws and just go, wow, look at what we're about to climb on. Really learned that I've got an amazing team. We have an amazing responsibility to the scouts and we're delivering an amazing product. So I couldn't be more proud, both personally and professionally. I mean, I learned how really good we are. That that it's not inconceivable to do a project that's absolutely enormous and do a really good job with it. 
being able to bite off smaller portions at a time and uh, focus on them in detail is, is really important. And, you know, I, I kind of equate that to, to what the scouts are going to be experiencing out there on site. And every, every reach, every step of climbing is, is, is just a part of the larger process. And, you know, moving forward, if, if we have another large scale project like this, it's not going to be as intimidating. And I'm going to be so ready for it. And I'm really, really looking forward to it. It, it definitely taught me that, that uh, through hard work and persistence, anything is achievable. The climbing wall installation by El Dorado Climbing Walls at the summit has set a new standard for outdoor climbing facilities. The artists that, that uh, El Dorado had on board to, to build these climbing walls were, were truly like no other. Uh, these walls will be the anchors for the summit. They'll be the ones that will be photographed on the postcards. They blend in and they look like they've been here forever. Uh, and it, they're, they're truly magnificent. And when I see those, it just um, I just know that we've done something that's, that's truly spectacular. If given the opportunity to work with El Dorado again, there wouldn't be any question. They're, they would be the contractor of choice. They're the leaders in the field, and uh, they're the ones that uh, are demonstrating how it should be done industry-wide. Um, I've kind of reflected back at times to think about you know, how this project originated, and uh, I think that Looking at it from the, from the Universal Studios consultants, the Disney World consultants, I think their big interest in this particular project was not necessarily uh, just assisting the Boy Scouts. I think they visualized this project as perhaps the future of the amusement industry. This particular project uh, perhaps represents maybe 30 years of wishes for me, which is to be able to build a, a full-on climbing crag outdoors. Uh, so, so that in itself uh, is probably enough, it, and, but the direction that, that, it, that it turned and, and the freedom that we were given by the Boy Scouts. And so thinking about what is the future of Disney World, is it still virtual things or is it perhaps kids getting out and doing real things in the real environment? Being in, involved on that level was, was just amazing. You know, I think that the coolest thing about this project is that it's the world's largest outdoor climbing wall installation, and it's all hand sculpted. It's all artificial, and you cannot tell. You know, I think that having built this thing that looks as though it's been there for thousands of years, it's awesome. <laughs>